now call to order the June 19, 2017 meeting of the New Canyon Independent School District Board of Trustees at 6.33 p.m. The minutes show that a quorum is present with uh, Mr. Wooten and Ms. Shipley being absent. Please rise in for the invocation to be given by Mr. Mixon. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and honor the text flag being led by Mr. Trout. Great. Good if I always come to you, uh, Dave, just uh, ask to for your blessing over this district, for each and every one of these employees, just ask that uh, you continue to uh, uh, keep your hand on, on us to uh, prepare us for a great school year, or that uh, we uh, make all the best decisions we can for these kids. It's your name we pray. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item two on the agenda is consideration of out-of-state field trip for Porter High School art presented by Dr. H. More formal. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, just wanted to come and ask permission for the board and superintendent for out of state field trip or uh, presentation to Washington, D.C. Uh, we did this last year as well. It's a congressional art competition and it's a nationwide competition with over 650,000 kids from across the nation that participated in this. Um, and we, Tanner Hodgkinson, won first place. That's his artwork up there. Believe it or not, that's a picture of his brother when he was young. And the whole theme of this year's art competition was baseball. Um, kind of ironic that, you know, what happened with the baseball thing up there, and then uh, Hodgkinson did that, and now Hodgkinson is being honored in this year. But he's not part of the family. Um, any questions on it? They get the artist, and one parent gets to fly up there for free with the competition. May I have any questions? Is there a motion to approve the out of state field trip for Porter High School Art? So moved. Second. Motion been moved and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion is approved. Thank you. Good luck and good time. Item three on the agenda is open quorum. Anyone have anybody? Item four on the agenda is closed meeting. The board will now meet and close meeting under text under the authority of Texas Government Code Section 551.074 for the purpose of personnel matters, Government Code 551.071 for attorney consultation, and Government Code 551.072 for deliver, deliberation regarding the purchase, ex exchange, lease, or value of real property. Any action as a result of closed session discussion will take place after the board reconvenes an open meeting. The time is 637. Board ended its closed meeting at 8.07 p.m. and we're now reconvening open session. I'm going to adjust the agenda slightly. We're going to move to item 7 on the agenda. Item 7 is a consent calendar, consistent consideration of minutes, consideration of financial reports, consideration of purchasing reports, and consideration of personnel reports, and consideration of donations. Are there any questions or further discussion on the consent calendar? Is there a motion to approve the items on the consent calendar? Second. Motion been moved second. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. And at this time I'd like Mr. Billy, would you introduce the Director of Support Services? <coughs> Take a minute to uh, introduce our new director of sports services, uh, Blake Carroll. Please rise there. He's got his lovely wife Janine and lovely daughter Taylor with him tonight. Uh, welcome to a new Kenny ISD. We're stealing him from Sheldon. So we're still a lot of people from Sheldon. That's, uh, we like doing that. 
So uh, welcome, Blake, and uh, we're ready to put you to work right away. I would like to introduce our new principal at Valley Ranch Elementary, Nicole Jones. Would please stand? We also stole her uh, from Jasper, Texas, which is my hometown. And we don't know each other, but I actually had my dad do detective work on her, um, and she turned out a cop. So that's good. Can I introduce something? We have a couple, maybe one AP, new AP here. Uh, Joseph, can you stand? Joseph is one of our own. Um, I think y'all know him from a science teacher uh, at um, New Caney High. He is our new AP at New Caney High School. We're very pleased with his growth, and um, I know he's going to be a perfect leader. Final agenda is reports and proposals of board members. Do have anything? Out of six on the agenda, superintendent's report. Uh, we'll start with Ms. Jeannie Reed to present the digital learning update. We're rearranging our agenda really big time. <laughs> <laughs> People got to catch flights, so we're getting things reorganized. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, first of all, let y'all know about a program that we use. Bright Bites is the solution that we've been using in our district as a bridge for our instructional services and digital learning initiatives. Bright Bites is helping us make major strides forward in transforming teaching and learning in our classrooms. Every fall and spring for the past two and a half years, all of our students in grades 3 through 12 and our teachers complete an online sur a survey from an outside data collection source, Clarity Bright Bites. This survey is also available for our parents to complete on campus web pages. The survey is completely anonymous and open for two weeks. The survey covers digital learning topics such as technology and learning, classroom, the four C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity digital citizenship, assessment, assistive technology, access to technology, skills, environment, policies, procedures, practices, support, and professional development. This evening, we have Mr. Adrian Gutierrez from, who is a client success partner with Bright Bikes. He's come to us from Colorado to go over our latest Bright Bites data with the board so that you can see where we stand in the state of Texas and compared to national data with our Bright Bites surveys over the past two and a half years. Adrian? Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for having me this evening. I want to thank uh, Linda and Jeannie for inviting me to present. Uh, this was based on a, a meeting we had in May. I met with uh, some uh, three different groups, and so I've got the data here for you. It's the green, is it the green one? It's the arrows. The arrows, sorry. Ah, okay. So uh, Clarity is an online platform. And uh, like Jeannie said, the teachers and students and even parents uh, answer surveys, and we have seven modules, and you, New Caney ISD, have technology and learning, all right? And so we evaluate, uh, or this module evaluates the case, the classroom, access, skills, and environments for your entire district. So uh, it's just a module that helps your district make actionable steps. So you receive the data, you look at it in the online platform, and then you decide what to do. And you're in a really good position as a district. Um, and so we're gonna celebrate. You have some really amazing stuff going on. That's why I'm excited to be here. Um, at the very top of this, we have the kind of key where it says the gray is beginning and then all the way over to exemplary in blue where it goes <laughs> up to 1300. And then your score is in green, 
right there below it where it says uh, 1126 and it has a little arrow behind advanced that says up. All right, so we're going to kind of use that as a, a guide for the rest of the data here. And in the middle of the screen it says classroom access skills and environment. That's your case score. That's what it means. And so you're evaluated on a whole bunch of data points from access for students in the classroom to student skills, everything. And it gives you some hints below there, like under classroom where it says four C's, that's creativity, collaboration, uh, critical thinking, and communication. And then just other little tips below there. So you're at 1126 for the district. Texas, right now, is at 1070. And you are well ahead of the entire state of Texas. So that's amazing in itself. But it gets even better than that. Across the entire United States, you're even further ahead of the entire United States. And in the U.S., we're at about one in every five schools, Clarity. And in Texas, it's even better, one in four schools. So you're in a very good position. You should be very grateful for the work that your, your team is doing. And I wanted to show you um, some more impressive scores. So the classroom score is usually the lowest for most school districts. You are leaps and bounds ahead of the schools in Texas, not only for classroom, but access. You are, by and large, you're almost perfect by access. A lot of schools think that the kiddos don't have a lot of access at home, but at school and at home, it shows both of those are excellent for your district. So you're in a really good position. And against the nation, you are even further ahead. All right? And I wanted to show you this because this was a real aha moment for some people. The first time you collected was in the spring of 2015, um, two years ago. And you were already in a good position there. It's the very top one, if you can see right there, it says 1094. What's really fantastic, and I've never seen this, it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen, is not only did you start out in a very good place, but you've increased almost um, incomparable numbers. I have never seen, and I've been using this, I've, I've been with Bright Bikes for three months, I was at uh, the service center in uh, San Antonio, Region 20, the past four years, and we used this. I've never seen a school with data like this that, that goes from proficient to advanced, and you increased from the fall of 2016, it's 11.04, to the spring of 2017, um, 21 points. That never happens. You don't, you don't see that kind of movement in any school, so you're in a really good position. The, the work that Jeannie's team um, does, uh, Belinda's team, they all work together down to the campus level. They communicate down to the classroom teachers in a, in a very rich and powerful way. It's, it's impressive to see. We have all kinds of reports that are available inside Clarity. Um, the curriculum report, professional development report, those are the students and the teacher reports that you can log in and see. Um, this is what one of the infographics in the student report looks like. Down underneath the picture of the student, you can see you had almost 9,000 students surveyed. So you had a great uh, response for the students. And it gives you some data uh, associated with that. And then here's the professional development report, the teachers. You had almost 900 teachers surveyed. And you're in a really great place with the teachers, like the foundational skills and the beliefs. So most of your teachers believe that not only does technology improve their daily lives, but it improves learning as well. And that attitude is a really um, impactful, it's an impactful percentage point for the students to see. And the 21st Century Learning Report, that's the classroom. And uh, I did want to highlight this. I was asked to show how Clarity and Canvas communicate, and Jeannie was telling me that um, they have some more great things that happen. Um, Clarity is fed through the Canvas platform, so it's like a one sign-on thing. And um, they've been invited, I know this wasn't planned, Jeannie, but they've been invited to present at another conference because of all the great work you guys are doing. So you're in a good place. Um, that's it, I want to keep it short and sweet. 
I'll answer any questions you guys have, but I really appreciate you inviting me out um, to New Canaan. It's been a pleasure. Questions? All right, thank you very much. I got a oh. thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. First off, thank you for you know providing the uh, administration. And who were the, the group, focus groups that were surveyed in this? Um, all of your students, third through 12th grade, and then all of the teachers, um, and then there were parent surveys as well, but the parent surveys don't feed into your data that you see. You can, you can compare a different lens with this, the parent data, but it's not included in your, your like school reports. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. What was the participation, the participation percentage? I mean, as far as uh, you have to get at least 80% um, of the surveys answered at the campus level in order to reach statistical significance. So you reach between 80 and 100% participation at every campus with all of your pops, your students, and your teachers. So that's it's really great, and it's not a it's not a small undertaking. 9,000 students who almost 9,000 students who responded that takes a lot of heavy lifting, and you do it twice a year. It's it's not common. It's unheard of. I was floored when I saw it, and um, I think that's why um, Belinda invited me here. Sorry, Dr. Neal. No. Kind of informal. She wasn't feeling well that day either. No one wanted to sit beside her. I mean, she's feeling better. <laughs> feeling better than the other day. You know, Seth, I'm sorry we feel. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate your, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go to our CTE interview report. <laughs> go with Mr. Strickland. Good evening. Uh, first thing I'd like to point out to you is our new CTE branding uh, for the state of Texas is uh, the brand that you see there on the slide. Uh, your journey starts here. Uh, so it is CTE. Very well. um, I try to do a little bit of a little bit of different presentation than what we've had in the past, and uh, give you a, a little bit of chart information and some graph. Uh, this is a comparison to the 2015-16 uh, school year to uh, this past school year. Uh, in actual students enrolled, uh, seven through twelve were up about 544 students uh, in a CTE class. These are students that are just that are enrolled in just one class. Uh, duplicate students enrolled were, were actually at quite a bit uh, by the numbers that we got from PEAMS, well over 5,000. <clears> these are students that are in multiple classroom classes, or these are multiple classes that are taken by students. So it's up quite a bit. We're excited about that. Uh, New Caney uh, High School enrolled, were up 319. Uh, Porter High School were up 269. Middle school uh, fell just a little bit by 44. Uh, we've got some, uh, some things that we're already starting to do to, to try to re-energize that a little bit. It mainly has to do with just class schedules and, and spaces in their schedules for them to get into, into a CTE class. But uh, we've already started taking some efforts into uh, work on that this past uh, couple of weeks in a professional development. Uh, looking at our funds uh, from the 16, excuse me, 15-16 school year and the 16-17 school year, uh, we went from 985 FTEs to a little over 1,000 uh, FTEs, which generated another 861 plus thousand uh, dollars uh, into the fund. So we're a little over 8 million now uh, funds generated. <clears throat> Participation and competitions, uh, 22 uh, student organizations that our students can be involved in. Uh, we've, we've got two district officers that were elected this past year. Um, this next number is kind of hard to, uh, to kind of describe, but these are 385 either single person compet uh, competitors or multi person teams uh, that competed at a district level. 150 of those advanced into an area or a regional competition, and then 78 went on to the state competitions in their prospective areas. 36 of those students are now uh, competing at a national level. We have some that are out right now at nationals. We've had some that compete in another week or two, uh, and some that have already competed within the past couple of weeks. 
so we could have more officers that are that are elected through those through those competitions and through those times. Uh, Three hundred ninety-four thousand uh, dollars for students through exhibits and scholarships. If you compare that to last year, it's a little bit down. Uh, reason being is we had a we had a national team that won nationals last year, and there was a lot of scholarships that were given uh, to that team. Uh, that won the uh, that won the competition at nationals last year. So, and, and there's some more some more of that could possibly come in through the summer through the national competitions that are going on right now. Um, our industry-based licenses and certifications. We have over 1,200 students that have received some type of license or certification, uh, 16, 17 school year, and there's a number of those uh, certifications or licenses listed there that uh, they can be uh, testing for and gain through our programs. The last slide shows a little bit about uh, what our middle school to high school connection is. Uh, of course in our in our seventh and eighth graders they're able to take uh, several different CTE classes. Uh, some of those are listed there exploring careers. Uh, we have portals in agriculture, portals in business ed, and portals in tech systems. Uh, all four of these help us out to energize students to be excited about a CTE uh, course in the high school areas. Uh, each one of those portals uh, really funnels into some of our programs that are at the high schools. And then the Exploring Careers, Career Investigations, different names for that class, uh, really helps the, helps the student to understand what type of um, possible pathway or cluster that they want to get into uh, for their high school, for the high school four years. So that's what we use our middle schools for. We work with them, uh, especially within the professional development in the last couple of weeks on uh, trying to get them connected to the high school teachers to understand what is actually there because they don't always know exactly what we do in high school. They hear about programs, cosmetology, culinary, all those different types of programs, ag programs that we have, uh, but they don't just have that connection with our high school teachers. So our high school teachers are excited about that. Uh, they're planning some visits and some things to do this next school year to try to encourage our students. Questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Fine arts. <Let's> go. <coughs> Good evening. I'm presenting on behalf of Mr. Pat Harris, who couldn't be with us this evening. Fine Arts, the New Caney Fine Arts Department had an amazing year. Many of our programs had historical firsts. Three of the four New Caney ISD Middle School bands earned the coveted UIL sweeps, excuse me, Sweepstakes Award at the UIL Concert and Site Reading Evaluation, scoring First Division, which is superior straight across in concert and site reading. Porter High School and the Ridge Forest Middle School bands have both advanced to area and are still involved in the state honor band process. The New Caney ISD Middle School Choir programs have all earned varsity status in UIL music competition from this state forward. The middle school choral program is relatively young and has competed in the non-varsity classification in all schools through last year, but now every middle school choir has earned a superior rating in the UIL concert and sight reading evaluation. The youngest music program in the district is orchestra. In only the second year competing in UIL, each program added value to scores earned in the previous year competition. They currently compete in the non-varsity classification, but are steadily moving towards superior scores. In high school competition, New Caney ISD programs continue to progress in both participation and achievement. And in your report, there's a bunch of detail <coughs> And break out. I will not read all of that. There's just a ton, uh, at least 25 different awards, and all of the score levels are there for you guys. Porter High School Dance Program participated in the Dance Educators Assessment of Learning and scored a Division I, which is superior from all judges. An art student at New Caney Elementary School won the Reliant Energy Power of Art People's Choice Award, bringing a $2,000 grant to that school's art program. Students at the New Caney Middle participated in the Scholastic Art Competition, sponsored by Harris County Department of Ed. One student received the Gold Key Award, while two won silver. This was the first time that New Caney ISD had students participate in this competition. 
We, of course, participate in the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Student Art Competition, winning the Super Show Award for the fifth consecutive time. Three New Caney High students were awarded scholarships to the Western Art Academy this summer. Six students' artwork were chosen to go to auction, raising $39,000 for scholarships. Each student will get a portion of that sale. Art students from both high schools qualified and participated in the State Visual Arts Scholastic event, which is called BASE in San Antonio. Three students scored a four, which is highest, and two students scored a three in competition. Four New Caney Middle School. Art students participated in the George Bush Presidential Library and Museum's 18th Annual Art and Essay Contest and took the top four places in the Sculpture Division. The Fine Arts Festival, as we know, is an incredible showcase of talent that makes up our community. Thousands of community members attended the event, this year hosted by Porter High School staff and admin. This event provided experiences from every fine arts program at every grade level from all schools in our district. And then finally, just highlighting upward enrollment trends in all fine arts programs. Every student enrolled in our district elementary schools benefit from instruction, of course, in both art and music from specialists in grades K through 5. Students enrolled in our secondary schools choose from a wide array of elective opportunities. Participation in fine arts electives grew by roughly 975 kids to a grand total of 6,566 participants in our fine arts programs. This growth is greater than 15%. We believe it's a direct reflection of the efforts of our teachers in recruiting and retention strategies and making those programs really work. So, any questions on fine arts? It was a great year. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Dr. Neal. I've been nominated by the executive team to present the strategic plan to you guys tonight. Um, First off, I want to try to explain a little bit about, you know, what is a strategic plan. Um, I've got one, thank you. Um, basically, it's the process of setting goals. Um, deciding on actions um, to achieve those goals and mobilizing the resources needed to take those actions. Um, we discussed it at length um, in Cabinet. Um, this particular strategic plan um, Work seamless with our district's vision, mission, and our core values, which is real, a reality model. Um, this plan, planning process, began simultaneously with the district needs assessment that we did for our district of innovation. It was just great timing that we did that. Um, the meetings consisted of teams of teachers, uh, parents, administrators, principals, and our executive team. In those meetings, uh, needs were identified by examining a lot of data, uh, not just um, test data, but a lot of data. In those areas examined were uh, demographic studies, student achievement, campus culture and climate, staff quality, recruitment and retention, curriculum, instruction and assessment, family and community involvement, district context and organization, and technology. So the executive team works to design a format and work collaboratively with their departments to make sure that we begin with the board goals. And if you'll notice on in your document, and we were, we were very proud that we could get this on one document, I mean on one page, although you may need some glasses even if you don't wear them. Um, because we feel like with one page, people will pick up and read it. Um, I don't know if you guys <coughs> ever looked at a strategic plan that has been in other districts, but it looks like um, they're hauling in paper or killing trees um, with the strategic plan. And we didn't want that. We wanted something that everybody could pick up and understand and, and, and know that New Caney ISD, the direction that they're taking. So this is the, re this is the result of what we did. We wanted to give you this tonight for you to see it, to um, look over it. We're not going to go with, over it and read every word to you. Um, next month, someone else, I guess, will um, ask for um, your permission to, to use this. 
um, to vote it into our system so we can use this on a daily basis um, whenever we're making decisions. Not only do we, of course, we look at vision, mission, goals, core values, our reality model, but this is the meat. This helps us stay focused. Because if you've read our district plan, it's a lot. Um, this will help us move a little further than what we want with our reality model. So you have any questions about any of the, the goals, the strategies? Uh, you know, I notice we have progress measures to, to make sure that whatever's in the strategies that we can measure. We do have a new role though. What's the presenters have got to come back and ask for it to be approved. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my stool this time to talk about it. Yeah, we do know what you're talking about. We've got a shorter podium for you here. Okay, any questions, guys? I want to talk just a little bit about the process and who's involved in coming in with this. Well, it started again with our needs assessment, which was our uh, district committee. Um, the same people that worked on our district innovation product, uh, project were also in on this project. And so these are our best of our best teachers that have been nominated by the staff and their, uh, and their campuses. Um, we have parent community members. Um, our, some of our principals were there and all of our executive team. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. To Mr. Seid. Yes, sir. All right. Take just a minute. In your, in your board book, you'll see a uh, summary, two-year summary of, of uh, a couple of things. Uh, numbers from 15, 16, and 16, 17, uh, and then some uh, team and individual accomplishments. I'll hit on those real quick, and then I'll let Coach Pennington and, and Coach Holly come up and talk about their programs. Our numbers are up a little bit, uh, specifically uh, in the middle school. We're coming up. We took a dip a couple of years ago when we went from two middle schools to four. Uh, all of our programs as well as enrollment uh, dropped. Uh, we're, that's coming back. The middle school programs are, at all four campuses are very strong uh, and getting stronger every day. We're fixing to reap the rewards of that at the high school level as well. Uh, team and individual accomplishments, a couple of things I want to hit on uh, that, that I think are important. Uh, first and second team, all district squads, uh, we almost doubled. Uh, from 15, 16 to 16, 17, uh, you know, and that's the coaches that are picking those. Uh, and so that's, to me, is a significant number. Uh, when you double that in a year, the number of kiddos that made first and second team all district uh, for all of our team sports. Individual sports, uh, we doubled the number of kiddos that qualified for regional competition, a uh, number of kiddos that went up to state competition as well. Uh, another one that I'm particularly proud of is in 15, 16, we had nine kids that signed college scholarships to play athletics. This year we had 31. So. I think that's significant, uh, and it's a tribute to all of our coaches, um, uh, both our team coaches and our individual coaches, and what they're doing to produce a quality product. So, uh, I'm going to let Coach Holly come first. He drew the short stick, so he gets to come first and, and talk a little bit about Porter High School and the Porter Feeder. Well, I appreciate you guys letting us come up and talk about our program. Um, kind of caught off guard here. Usually, I follow Coach Green, I just say did. I was say, hey, but. Uh, uh, I'm going to kind of just expand a little bit on these same numbers and just talk about our kids and where we're at a little bit. Uh, we have 20 uh, programs at Porter High School, 20 sports programs. That's team, team programs and individual programs. Uh, and of those 20 programs, we had 15 of our 20 programs this year uh, go beyond district competition. Uh, and that's a significant number. And uh, we're very, very proud of that number. Uh, obviously, we, we want to get better, uh, but it's, it's a really good number to have. Uh, our numbers at Porter High School uh, increased for the first time to over 700 uh, kids that are participating in athletics, uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, of our team competition, our team sports, uh, we had four programs uh, that advanced beyond uh, district competition, uh, with the highlight of that being our girls soccer team who were district champions uh, in regional quarterfinals. Uh, in addition to that, on our individual sports, as far as first and second team uh, all district members, like uh, Mr. Sop was saying, uh, at Porter High School, we had a 32% increase of young men and women who uh, achieved that honor. And so we went from 31 uh, kids in 15, 16 to 45 kids uh, in 16, 17. So we're really, really proud of that as well. Uh, as far as the individual 
uh, sports. We had uh, last year, we had 20 uh, uh, young men and women student athletes advanced to uh, regional competitions. Uh, this year we had 54. Uh, so that's increased to 63% of kids, and that's a very significant number, so we're very excited about that. Uh, we had four kids last year that advanced to state competitions. Uh, this year we had six, which is a 33% increase as well. Uh, and so these are really, really good numbers for our kids and moving forward. I also want to talk a little bit, let's it's not your numbers right there, I want to talk a little bit about our academics and as far as the student athletes are concerned. Uh, we, we do a great report. Uh, each grading period over at uh, Porter High School for our kids um, that are on our student athletes and every grade report we did, uh, the failure rate for each grade report was anywhere between 6%. I think the top one we had was 9.3%. Uh, when you compare that to, uh, I'm not going to tell you anything you guys don't already know, uh, but it just shows you the involvement, whether it's uh, extracurricular, whether it's athletics, whether it's band, or uh, any kind of a kid gets involved is a significantly lower number of failure rate. Uh, and our number from just a regular student is about uh, two-thirds to three-quarters less than the student body. And so it's a significant number. So making those connections is, is uh, in, in athletics and in other uh, extracurricular activities makes a huge difference in academics as well. As far as high school academic college district athletes at our school this year, we had 68 kids uh, that achieved academic college district. Uh, in addition to that, uh, some of the highest, uh, and it's very hard to get on these all-state academic teams, uh, we had 20 kids uh, achieve academic all-state status uh, for our athletes, and uh, we're very, very proud of that. Uh, we had, uh, uh, I, I do want to uh, try not to be some specific here, but we had 11 football players that made academic all-state, uh, and I was really proud of that quite more than anything we did this year. And so that's a very significant number. I think we're second in Montgomery County as far as all the sports football teams uh, in our county. So we're really proud of that. We're behind the woods in that category. So we can catch up with them next year. As far as the increase in uh, kids playing collegiate sports, just to expand off the number you already had for the district. Uh, in 15-16, Porter High School had four uh, young men and women uh, go play at the collegiate level. Uh, this year we had 17. That's a 76 percent increase. Uh, so again, very significant numbers. Uh, I also want to I want to make sure that uh, you know we're doing some other things in our programs. One of the things we're very proud of is we have an all sports uh, speed and summer strength camp. And uh, last year, uh, you know, was the highest number we had in 15-16. Uh, that number was uh, 245 kids, which was about 100 kids higher than they previously had at Porter High School. Uh, well, we started our first day of camp today, and for all of our kids, uh, this is our high school camp and our middle school camp, uh, we had 310 kids show up today. So we're very, very excited about that. That's about a 21% increase of last year's number. And so usually we get about another 30, 40 uh, kids within that first week and the second week. And so we potentially have around 350 kids. And so uh, that's a lot, of, a lot of folks coming up this summer uh, for our athletic programs. Uh, I also want, I don't want to miss out on a couple of things, I won't keep you too much time, but I also want to uh, just touch briefly on our middle school programs. Uh, you know, I, I just really feel that it's the lifeline uh, of your high school programs and the things that uh, we're allowed to do uh, in our district as far as, uh, you know, having our access for our head coaches going out to middle schools, uh, having two middle school feeder programs, uh, it's just, it plays a significant role in high school success. And, uh, you know, doing things right now there, making those the vertical alignments uh, and getting everything lined up the way we have it uh, makes a huge difference. For example, last year, uh, I'll give you one example. Football, we had, coming over, we had 50, about 54 kids assigned for football. This year, we have about 98 kids signed up for freshman football. And so making those things aligned and getting everything in order uh, pays big dividends at the high school level. Uh, the last thing I want to mention, and I'll be done, if those people can come up, uh, is I, I do want to talk about, it's very important in our athletic programs that, uh, you know, when I talk to my head coaches, it's, it's very important that we build championship programs. Uh, and there's lots of things that go into that. Uh, but it starts with the school board. And you have to have a school board, uh, you have to have the administration, 
Uh, you have to have coaches, the staff, support staffs, and all those things that go into building successful athletic programs. Uh, and I can say without a doubt, uh, in my, my short time that, that I've been around in athletics, and whether it's playing or it's coaching, I've never seen a district that is structured uh, and is supported uh, the way you guys do. And uh, I just want you guys to know that uh, the way you guys do things and the way we run business here is uh, second to none. And uh, I know I appreciate it and uh, I'm very thankful for what you guys do. And so um, uh, I know it makes a big difference in our success. And, and you guys play a big, big part of that. So we want to say thank you for that as well. Uh, any questions on any of the stats of that? Well, thank you for your time. Way over. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a handout. He's got a handout. He's got a handout. He's going to be doing all that. I'm going to read this. I'll tell you what I want to do. Um, obviously, um, there's a lot of excitement going on in New King right now. And, um, uh, where I want to kind of harp on is a little bit of what you guys have done since I've been here. Uh, I just I just finished up my sixth year, and um, you know when I when I got here to New Caney, uh, actually I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but I actually opened up Porter. I was at Porter High School the very first year that it opened up, so it was kind of kind of a neat and unusual thing. And it was a really rough time when I went to New Caney uh, for about three weeks, and they hated my guts that I was from Porter. And so uh, uh, just to be real honest with you, the first meeting I had. Uh, I had one of my kids that I was uh, talking to the kid. The very first meeting, one of the New Caney kids turned his back. I mean, it was it was a rough it was a rough start, and um, so th things have really come a long way since then. And uh, one of the things that happened when when I got uh, asked would I be interested in the job, uh, there was a plan that was laid out about you know hey this is what we're about to do. We're going to build a stadium, and you know we're we're going to try to do these things for you. But one of the most significant things is what he's just. Uh, said is the middle school programs and um, you you know you, you have to have a foundation from which to build and uh, on, on that paper down at the bottom if you if you would just kind of kind of buzz through a little bit of that you see football district champion seventh and eighth grade boys basketball district champion eighth grade girls basketball district champion seventh and eighth grade volleyball district champion seventh and eighth grade now I can just go on well those are some accomplishments from, from our middle school programs that have occurred just this past year and that doesn't happen by accident it happens because we're able because you make it for us to be able to get our coordinators and our, our basketball coaches and our volleyball coaches down to working with those kids that's significant one of the things that coach said is that uh, the way this thing is put together and the way it's laid out uh, allows us an opportunity to be successful and that's huge i, I just want you to know how significant that is um, I am about to enter my 33rd year of coaching and teaching, so I've been doing this a while. And uh, I feel like I've been very blessed uh, in the people that I've worked with and the organizations that I've been a part of. And just like uh, Coach Holly just said, um, what a great place for me to finish up my career. Uh, because there's this place is special, it really is. And the reason it's special is because you guys make it that way. Um, I can go on through, one of the things I'm really proud of uh, that I think has really changed since, since I got to New Caney is we, we, we had 12 out of 20 of our athletic programs advance uh, here at, at the high school. The one thing I will, will say is, uh, you know, my first three years here, I was 2-8, 2-8, 2-8. And, eight, eight. and uh, the first question that I got asked at the first board meeting, uh, Booster Club meeting that I was at, uh, there was a lady that stood up and she said, you going to stick around here? And she was mad. And, uh, you know, I was a third coach. It was just life's journey because nobody's really, you know, it wasn't anybody's fault, but they wanted somebody that was committed, that was going to come in here, and was going to spend time to build a program. Well, first of all, let me just thank you for not firing me after that 2 and 8, 2 and 8, 2 and 8. And uh, I think everybody can see we were getting a little bit better, a little bit better, but it wasn't showing up on the school board yet. And, uh, and then we went 4 or 6, and then we went 7 and 4, and I just tickled to death. I got to tell you that. Uh, to be co-district champions this year with a great group of kids, a great group of coaches, and then also win the first playoff game in the history of New Canaan in 11-man football was a pretty special thing to do. 
And that was the plan. That's what we wanted to do. But you guys made it happen because of all these other things that are going on. Well, that trickles over into the other sports. And, uh, you know, we're seeing, you know, 12 out of our 20 teams advancing. And uh, at Duquesne, it all starts with you guys. And then one of the things that's significant for us, I think, is how we go about the culture of changing the culture and developing the culture of winning. And we do that through our character education program. Uh, if you talk to any of our kids, you talk to any of our coaches, uh, you know, when I first got here, I didn't mandate that all of our coaches in every sport do it. But as we began to pour into our kids, and uh, you know, some of our coaches are also head coaches uh, in other sports, then, then they started to see the significance of spending time developing character with these kids. And, and now it's kind of taken off. Well, you know, going into my seventh year now, you know, there's been some coaches changes and uh, uh, really have, I think we've done a great job of bringing in some people uh, that are about ministering to kids. And that, that's where it starts with us. And uh, so I think that's happening. Uh, there are the numbers right there, just real quick for our, our numbers. Uh, uh, we started our camp season. Uh, our boys basketball camp had over 130 kids uh, last week. Our girls had 70. Uh, we had our first baseball camp since I've been here in the summer. I don't know why we had, had baseball camp before. We had our first one. We had 35 kids that did the other day, so we were, we were really happy uh, about that turnout. We're averaging about uh, 120 kids at our football camps, and uh, I'm, I'm expecting that to go up. I will tell you this, uh, and with our football numbers, my first year here, uh, six years ago, we had 92 kids in our high school program from ninth grade through 12th grade. Uh, this year we had, uh, we started out with about 188, we probably ended up about 180, and uh, so I'm really proud that we've doubled our numbers uh, in that. Um, you know, your volleyball teams, your basketball teams, uh, they kind of cut, so their, their numbers kind of stay about even, and we're, we're, we're healthy there. Uh, there. There's two significant things that, uh, that I'm struggling with a little bit, and, you know, we've got two spring sports that our numbers are down a little bit, and, and I can tell you why. The reason why is because we've had some turnover. Uh, we, have, we haven't had that consistent leadership in there. And so uh, we feel like we have uh, addressed that, and I'm excited about that. So I think you're going to see uh, uh, you know, both of those programs, and you can look at that. I don't want to call them out, but um, I think we're going to continue to, to grow in those areas too. And uh, so we're excited about what's going on. I want to thank you. Uh, for uh, what you do for us because it's, it's significant. And uh, y'all have any questions? Okay. Let's turn that. You just fit to get off the hook. Yeah, I'll just get off the hook. I'll spend a little time just talk about uh, TTES. That's what's on the board agenda. This is a teacher, Texas teacher evaluation and support system. And that uh, curriculum instruction and uh, human resource department. As we're looking at this, uh, this is the state evaluation system. Uh, it focuses on uh, timely and informative feedback to educators so that they can improve their practice. The state of Texas began uh, in putting in place this evaluation system in 2015-16. Uh, uh, we were continuing to use an uh, alternate uh, evaluation system uh, and have done that, uh, but CNI and HR feel like it's, it's time to look at uh, moving toward the uh, state evaluation system, which is uh, TTES. Um, and looking at uh, the system that we've been using and this evaluation system, there's some common things that are, that, that are in both uh, that we feel like uh, in making the change will be a smooth transition because uh, you know things like goal setting and lesson planning uh, are common. Uh, the evaluation cycle where we do a uh, pre-conference evaluation in a post-conference that's also uh, similar. And then uh, all systems in Texas are looking at uh, using uh, student growth measures as part of the evaluation process. So that's consistent as well. Um, 
the other thing is that uh, at the same time, 1516, uh, the state uh, put together a an evaluation system for principals. It's called TPES. So teachers is TTES and principals is TPES. And so we've been using that state system uh, for our principals. And the two match very well together because they were put together, uh, they were put uh, in place the same year. And so um, I just want to report this is the direction that we like to go uh, with our uh, teacher evaluation system. Any questions? Item 8 on the agenda is consideration of award construction contract for wide open middle school additions and renovations to DT construction. For the 2015 bond. Mr. Cowell. Yes, sir. I bring you all to for approval of this proposal from the 2015 bond program. This is for an addition and renovation of the pre ag wing at Wide Oak, as well as some general updates of the campus uh, that's included in the renovations. Like I said, we got six proposals on that. We looked at this briefly in our last workshop we had. This is kind of that last major big ticket item in the 2015 program. So I asked for y'all's approval on that tonight. Any questions? Any questions? Is there a motion to award a uh, award construct contract for a White Oak Middle School additions and renovations to DT construction from the bond 2015? Motion then move second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is approved. Item 9 on the agenda is consideration to approve change of uh, proposal request number 32, outdoor canopy for dining area for the bond 2016 Infinity Early College High School. This is one we also talked about at that board workshop uh, a couple of months prior. We brought to you the canopy cover in the, the basketball area and things like that. This is to reflect that, really make that space more useful for the kids if they want to go outside and eat. Uh, they're not eating in the blade of the sun in the middle of the day. So uh, this was an original alternate to the project. Through value engineering, we found the funds to put it back in. So I asked if there was approval. Questions? Is there a motion to approve? Change proposal request number 32, outdoor <coughs> canopy for dining area by 2016, Infinity Early College High School. Motion been moved and second. All those favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. Item 10 on the agenda is consideration of approving <coughs> additional scope of work at the annex by the West Fall 2015 bond at the New County High School. Annex, that is. Yes, this is one uh, we did talk about that board workshop. Um, so I've got a couple of helpers over here to help with this. Uh, curriculum instruction, trying to figure out a better way to maximize our space between the annex modular building the existing central office. And so, uh, I believe that's Chuck came up with this idea. Uh, do some work over at the annex to make that a better training area, office area for their department. Um, it is a change order that will uh, be tacked on with the general contractor in Kane High School. So I will have all the questions for what they're going to use it for, uh, training spaces, office spaces, uh, new areas for their curriculum coordinators. They are, they are here and they're the experts on that side. So that knows the value. Mr. Franklin went over with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Motion to move second. All those favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. Want me to skip over and let you go to your next one or do you want to? All right, we'll, we'll switch up the pattern here. Uh, You're going to number 12? I'm going to go for number 12. Okay, item 12 on the agenda is consideration of approved change proposal number 16, courtyard revisions from bond 2015 at the mandatory. Yes, this is another one of those we talked about at the, the workshop. I believe y'all saw the pictures for the high area out here with the uh, grassy area, fountain, all that stuff. So that is what this change order is. At that time, we didn't have a good solid number. We brought it to you last month, but we got that. And so that's what's for approval right now. Yep. Playground. Swimming. Playground. 
Gathering. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to approve change order to approve change proposal number 16, courtyard revisions for bond 2015 at the New County ISD District Mandatory? Second. Second. Motion to approve the second. All those first say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. We'll jump back up to item 11. We want Mr. Cabot to get up there. Item 11 on the agenda is consideration to memorandum of understanding with JJAEP. In your packet, we have the 2017-18 memorandum of understanding between New Caney ISD and Juvenile Justice Alternative Education Program with Conroe ISD. Asking for your approval of that. And uh, the document did not change from last year. In fact, that changed in the last four years. It's the same one we've been on for about four or five years now. Questions? Motion to approve the memorandum of understanding with JJEP. Second. Motion to move. Second. All those favor say aye. All those opposed. Motion is approved. In no further business, this meeting is adjourned at 9 o'clock.